Hey you, welcome back. My name is Al and this is part four of the Cute Cactus tutorial. So let's dive in. So the very first thing that we are gonna do, we are gonna create little dimples all over this character. And then inside of those dimples, we're going to create little bitty nubs or spikes. As an insert mesh, we can just drag and drop wherever we need them. So on the left hand side of the screen, you can see that I'm using drag rectangle. And this is the alpha that I have selected. And I picked this one just because it wasn't uh, too hard. It also wasn't too soft. If it's too hard, these dimples would have been a little too distracting in my opinion. And if it were too soft, that would just mean the dimples would have no purpose. They couldn't even be seen. So a combination of drag rectangle as well as drag dot. So drag dot works by just, um, you know, pressing and moving it around, moving your stylus around or left clicking and dragging to really nail that position, get it where you want. So I can do the body. I'm trying to work in clumps of twos and threes, really just playing around, see what looks good, zooming out, seeing what looks good at a distance. So on our previous video in this series, I had projected all my details, or I pointed you to a link to project all the details, and this gave me lots of polygons. I think there's like, I don't know, 500,000 polygons just for the body or something like that. So plenty of polygons, maybe million plus, I don't remember. But that's going to allow me to get this really nice crisp uh, details on all the dimples. So that's all we're doing here. Um, you can see that I didn't really love some of these positions. So if I didn't like it, I'm just going to undo. Whatever feels right, just go with it. But don't make it too cluttered and don't make it too bare. You can find a happy medium just with whatever character design you're you're trying to go with. Now, I am dropping in my insert mesh brush that I've created. Now, you might say, whoa, you haven't covered that. Well, you're right. This is very simple. This was literally just a sphere, and I used a taper deformer. So I pressed the gear, went to taper, grabbed the yellow triangle at the top, and just kind of tapered it. You could do the same thing if you used the move topological brush. Just stretched out this little nub. That's all it is. In your brush palette, you can go down to create new insert mesh brush. And that's where we're at here. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I can literally just drag roughly in the middle of the dimple, pull out, and I'm pulling out these dimples. So the dimples are my guide and they tell me exactly where I want to place uh, these little nubs or these spikes. One interesting thing about this character was I didn't want the spikes to be too spiky because I felt like that would be a little too aggressive like he still needs to be cute he doesn't need to be i don't know super violent or mean um, so these little nubs they ended up working out well one thing after i use the insert mesh brush i can press w and i can scooch that nub in out forward and backward just to place it a little better if i mess up i also don't want to make it larger than my dimple that's very important that way i can actually get some use out of the dimple and it feels like that nub is actually embedded in the surface Okie dokie, so we are moving on to the pot details. Now, I wanted this pot to really emphasize the, or accentuate the character of the cactus. So the cactus is a little abrasive, little rough, so I wanted the texture of the pot to really, to have that too. Kind of war-torn, beaten up a little bit, not totally broken or shattered, but have scratch marks, have rough texture and feel, kind of like the personality of our cactus. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is use layers. So we haven't used layers yet, but layers is super, super helpful, especially if you're exploring ideas and it makes all the sculpting that you do basically non-destructive. And I'll be able to ramp up the intensity um, and then dial it back just to, to get it right where I want it. So I've created a new layer. Uh, you can see that I have that slider in the middle of that uh, palette. I can crank up and down, see what I like. And I've actually created two layers and I'm using the orb slash. Uh, that can be found online at Gumroad. Just look for orb slash brushes and you'll find it. Great pack, hugely popular. Everybody uses it, but that's because it's so good. I can use H polish around the edges. I also used H polish a lot, very quickly. You probably missed it uh, to give this entire pot just some texture. So that's where all that roughness is coming around the edges. It's great for flattening those edges, but also just on those main forms. 
When I'm using age polish, whether I'm doing like a, a sword or some sort of wood or, or something like that rocks, I like to do just a little circle here and there. I think it's a nice little touch with age polish and that's what I did there. Constantly rotating around. And then I'm gonna play with orb cracks. So I have several different layers now and I can adjust the intensity of each of these. I'll lay down one layer, hmm, dial it in how I like it, do these scratches, and if I need to, I can crank up that intensity. So imagine doing this whole section without layers, right? Let's say I did the whole thing and then I did everything way too intense. It's really tough to like dial back. Now I could use like the contrast slider um, in this latest release of ZBrush if I were like a little too uh, not intense enough. But layers is super, super helpful, especially if you're exploring, especially if you would like to be not as destructive because I can always go back. I can hide layers, um, really layer down or layer up, whichever way you want to go with it. Uh, layer up those weathering effects with whatever you're with whatever you're sculpting. This could be used on the cactus too. I just chose not to do it that way, but it is a great feature you should check out. All right, so last but not least is some poly paint. Let's do it. Okay, so I slowed this section down just a little bit because I'm gonna go up to Z plugin, the Z color, and I actually already have a hex code that I found online for just a green that I liked uh, out of a color palette. That's what I'm gonna type there and then hit set color. Now, anytime I wanna actually make this color permanent, I'm gonna go to that subtool, like the body there, and then go up to the top left to color down to fill object. I will do this for both arms. Go up to color, down to fill object, because that green is already selected. And that is actually just gonna like seal the deal, make it permanent. So the same thing with the nubs, whenever I change them to yellow, I will change the color to yellow and then fill object. So the color is not uh, set in stone until you actually go to fill object. Now you can always change it. You can see right now the tongue, the eyes, and the nubs are all changing when I change the color. That's because I have not went to color fill object. Alrighty, so when you're poly painting, it's important um, to turn off Z add. So at the top middle of my screen, you can see the Z add has already been turned off. Um, so when I'm using my standard brush, I turn off Z add and then I just want RGB on. Currently, I'm hitting all those peaks uh, with just a brighter color, kind of this yellow nasty green. So I'm hitting the peaks, give this this uh, nice hand painted highlight look, give some variation in the color. And then eventually I'm going to get a darker green and then same thing, standard brush, just painting very roughly over these spots. So think of this as like hand painted ambient occlusion. If you had a, like a Warhammer miniature, you might do something similar or you might actually paint everything black, but you want these like creases and wrinkles to have this, uh, uh, this, this darker look, especially if you're doing this cartoon kind of style that I have going here. And that's why I'm doing that. Once again, just changing the color ever so slightly. Don't forget that whenever you hold shift, you can smooth out colors. But when you hold shift, you have to turn off Z add as well. If you don't do that, you're actually going to be smoothing your model out. And that's probably not what you want if you're trying to poly paint. We just actually want to blend those colors together. You can see that I do that a lot here. I will use a brighter color uh, for the very tip of the nub and then I'll hold shift to smooth that color to kind of make it a nice little gradient. Otherwise it would have been uh, too abrupt. Honestly, I'm not so sure how great this whole process uh, was for the nubs. I don't think it was worth it. There's not enough contrast. So whenever you zoom out, you can't even see the color change. So that was my bad. If you were gonna do this, I would definitely make the base of the nub a little darker and just increase that contrast between those two colors, just so it actually makes sense. Or just make it all one color. That's cool too. You can see that I forgot to drop in some of those nubs. Even in tutorials, uh, we make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, I'm telling you. Uh, so it's good to make mistakes, it's good to learn. I'm glad I got those little nubs in there. I literally just, I guess, didn't look at that uh, back of the arm. So the tongue and eyes, as well as the pot and the sand, are actually going to be a color that I pick from Keyshot. 
So I won't do that here in this tutorial, but with this darker color, I'm going in and making it even more apparent. You can see on those little dimples, I'm kind of being rough. I'm not really staying inside the lines. I know my teacher told me to color in the lines, stay in between the lines, but I am not. Uh, I just wanted it to bleed out a little just so I could see it because I know there's going to be nubs there. Honestly, I don't think I would eat this pickle. He doesn't look too friendly currently. Kind of looks a little scary. Hey, thank you for sticking around for this video. If you felt like I earned it, hit that subscribe button or even better, let me know in the comments what you thought. I will see you next time.